new series, same issues. Welcome to From Center Ice. My name is Courtney and I am here to talk about game number one of round number two between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Florida Panthers. Ah, uh, yes, that is right. The Toronto Maple Leafs made it past the first round of the playoffs for the first time in 19 years. So how about we carry those happy feelings into game number one, shall we? Well, let's just see about that. Since it's a new series and they're playing a new team, you have to expect coming out in the first period that there will kind of be a feeling out process between the two teams. And I guess maybe there was, but the Panthers definitely came out a lot faster and with a lot more fire in their game than the Leafs did. That's not to say that Toronto had quite the bad starts that they had against Tampa early in that series, but for the first few minutes there, Florida was pushing the pace a little bit more. But the Panthers also took the first penalty of the game as Sam Bennett launched his elbow into David Camp's face. You simply cannot do that, and that was a rather dirty hit, and I didn't really see many people talking about it after it happened. Maybe it's because it was actually called a penalty on the ice, which we haven't seen in some other instances. Regardless, the Leafs to the power play, and they don't convert. But the good thing here is they did have a few more chances than they had against Tampa Bay because the Florida Panthers don't have as good of a penalty kill as Tampa does. So the Leafs did have some more time and space, but Sergei Bobrovsky was doing his best Andre Vasilevsky impression and was stopping everything that came at him. I mean, the Leafs only got two shots on their power play, but you know what I mean. So they don't score there, but they do also get the second power play of the game and they don't score there either. And then nine minutes and 25 seconds into the first period, Sam Bennett wins the puck battle behind the net against two Toronto defenders. He pops a puck over to Matthew Kachuk down in the right corner. Kachuk skates out to the front of the net, is holding onto the puck nice and patiently because he has all of the time and space in the world to do so. He tries to shoot it far side on Samsonov because there was some open net there, but Sammy makes the stop. Unfortunately, in doing so, the rebound pops right out to the front and Jake McCabe, who had Nick Cousins tied up, did not tie him up quite well enough because he just kind of spins around, gets his stick on it first and roofs the thing. One, two, nothing, Panthers. Not a big deal. It's one goal. The Leafs aren't playing terribly. They had some chances on their power plays. It was an unlucky bounce. There was certainly some questionable defense on that shift that led to the goal because certain guys were just wide open. And that kind of spelled out how the rest of the game would go on the defensive side for the Leafs. But this goal, it was a bad bounce off of a rebound. Cousins was able to get to it first. It's only one goal. What are you gonna do? Well, if you're Morgan Riley, what you're gonna do with about five minutes left in the first period is get trucked by the official. That's right. Morgan Riley got body checked by the official in the offensive zone. He was coming down the left wing. He was kind of on the wall, but then he was going to cut more toward the net. The ref was looking at him, kind of looking like he wanted to get out of his way, but then they kind of did that thing when you're like walking at somebody and you think they're gonna go that way, so you go this way, but then they go this way, and so you just, you're all sorts of confused. Except usually when you do that, you're walking, so you can just kind of stop. Well, these two guys were on skates, and so bam, they run into each other. Morgan Riley falls down. Thankfully, he was okay. It was just so ridiculous ridiculous looking. If you watch the replay, the ref is caught so far in no man's land that it looks like he is trying to read Morgan Riley's eyes and specifically get in his way so he can knock him over. Obviously, that's not what happened and I don't think that's what happened. So don't even give me, oh, there go the Leafs fans again, trying to say the refs are always against them. Not what happened here and this game was actually pretty well officiated. But that play was just so ridiculous to watch. If you haven't seen it yet, go look it up. I'm sure it'll be all over YouTube. It's all over Twitter. You'll be easily able to find it. But no one else scores in that period, so these two teams go into the intermission with Florida up one to nothing. On to the second period. After a first period where more often than not the Leafs defenders looked like they had no idea where they were supposed to be, they had to kill off a little more than a minute of a Giordano penalty that he took at the end of the first. 
and they do kill it off. It was actually a pretty good penalty kill for the Leafs and they do seem to take some momentum from it. The second period starts a lot better for the Leafs. They're getting to lose pucks a bit quicker. They're getting some more offensive opportunities. They're not getting run over as often by the Panthers or the officials. But seven minutes and 58 seconds into the second period, the Panthers are able to do what they did a lot of tonight and that was keep the puck in the offensive zone. It got back to the point to Aaron Ekblad who just takes a shot. I think Matthew Nyes redirects it first, but then Sam Bennett gets the touch on it right in front of Samsonov and in. Two to nothing Panthers. This is not ideal. Also not ideal for the Dallas Stars and I have the game on right behind me here, but Seattle just scored twice in like a few seconds. Which, thank you Seattle, that was like the perfect segue because speaking of multiple goals in a few seconds, eight minutes and nine seconds into the second period, 11 seconds after Sam Bennett gets his, Austin Matthews has the puck on the left wall. He's battling for it. Matthew Nyes comes skating up the center of the ice. Austin sees him, throws the puck out there, hits him right on the stick. Nyes holds it on his forehand, just looking like he's trying to pick which corner he wants to shoot it into. He skates it closer, closer to the net. Oh, switches to the backhand. And Bobrovsky bites hard on that. So, oh, back to the forehand. And our beautiful treasure of a boy. He gets Bobrovsky to slide out of the way. He has a wide open net looking at him. And like the beautiful prince he is, he does a little spin move to make it fancy and puts that thing in the net for his first goal as a Toronto Maple Leaf and it gets them on the board two to one. That was quite a goal to get as your first in the NHL. And then 14 minutes and 51 seconds into the second period, Ryan O'Reilly breaks the puck into the offensive zone, tosses it over to Kelly Yarncroke, who is on the right wall. Yarncroke throws that thing in front where in swoops Michael Bunting going from his forehand to the backhand, avoiding Sergei Bobrovsky's poke, and he puts that thing in the net. The game is tied two to two. Whoo, what a period the second was. You have the Leafs start Starting it by killing off a penalty. Matthew Nyes with his first goal as a Leaf and it is beautiful. Michael Bunting after coming back into the lineup in game six against Tampa, he gets on the board in this one with a nice goal of his own. Oh my gosh, y'all, Seattle just scored again. This is not going well for Dallas. Which is also kind of a good segue, thank you, Seattle. Because 17 minutes and 47 seconds into the second period, you got four Leafs deep in the offensive zone. They don't score, Tampa gets a hold of it and starts going the other way. TJ Brody is the only guy back and he takes this lazy, one-handed, attempted poke at it to try to keep it in the offensive zone, but he fails to do so. And then, even though he knows he is the only guy back because he can see his four teammates in front of him, he doesn't, you know, like, dart back to try to help out his goaltender and watch for any passes that may come. He pays sole attention to Anthony Duclair, who has the puck. Duclair sees Carter Verhage breaking up the middle of the ice, taps it over to him. He's able to skate around Brody, who could not catch up to him, and then everybody else on the ice just kind of stops. So Carter Verhage has a breakaway, and as he has done all playoffs long, he takes the puck and puts it in the back of the net, and the Florida Panthers are up three to two, and they also can't stop scoring. I know it's only three goals, but it just felt like they couldn't stop, unlike the Leafs and all of their skaters on the ice, because they certainly stopped skating. Just please go back and rewatch this goal and just look for Ryan O'Reilly on this play. He could potentially be the second guy back instead of, you know, the other defender. But he is in the middle of the ice. He is behind Carter Verhage, but Verhage had to slow down in order to receive the puck and not be offside. So had O'Reilly just kept going, perhaps he could have caught up to him a little more, put a little pressure on him, made him not get the shot that he wanted. But no, everybody just stops and the puck goes in. And three to two is how this thing goes into the second intermission. On to the third period. Leafs are only down by a goal, no big 
steal, they can score goals, we know they can score goals, we know they can come back in games, we saw it happen multiple times in the first round. Half of the period goes by, no goals for the Leafs, no goals for Florida, so you know, it's okay. But you know, the Panthers realized that it was the third period and they had the lead going into it and their goaltender Sergei Bobrovsky was playing very well in this game. Like, what year is it? It looks like Vesna Trophy Sergei Bobrovsky all over again, but I digress. 12 minutes and 24 seconds into the third period. Florida has some sustained pressure again. They get it back to the point. Brandon Montour does what he's done all playoffs long, just like Carter Verhage. He takes a shot at the net. There's some traffic in front of Sammy, but he needed to be able to track that one better. He didn't. The puck goes in. Florida is up four to two. So now the Leafs are down two goals and they have just under eight minutes to try to do something with that information, hopefully something good, and they do not. They struggle just to get Samsonov pulled because they can't break out of their own zone, and if they do get out of their own zone, they can barely get through the neutral zone. And if they can get through the neutral zone, they end up turning the puck over in the offensive zone. So this game ends with the Florida Panthers winning 4-2. to And I know it is only game one, it is not a huge deal, the Leafs lost game one of the first round, and guess what? They're in the second round, so obviously they won that that series. It's only one game, but while the Leafs played better than they did in the first round, there were still some huge glaring mistakes, and a lot of those came on the back end. The defense left a lot to be desired in this game one. Like I said before, there were many times where their defenders just didn't look like they knew where they were supposed to be, which is rather frustrating because none of these guys are new to the team. They know the system. They know what they're supposed to do. The forwards were okay, but for a lot of the first half of the game, I'll say they were trying to force pass is too much. Florida was doing a good job of closing down passing lanes and the Leafs were like, let's just try it anyway. So that caused a lot of turnovers, which was really frustrating to watch. Austin Matthews started this game really well. He came out firing and he was firing shots toward the net any chance he could. Some of them went wide. Others were absolutely robbed from being a goal by Sergei Bobrovsky. I swear, I think Austin's going to see Bob in his nightmares tonight. I know that I might. So the Leafs really need to just clean that up. This was the first game and once again, they failed to take the win at home. Luckily, game number two is also at home. That's how these things go. Let's hope they can come out in that one looking a bit tighter, looking a bit more determined to take the game away from Florida. It was a weird game because while there was a lot to criticize, the Leafs also didn't play that badly. So you have to give credit where credit is due. The Florida Panthers came out in this game and absolutely took control of it. They had to win three straight to beat the Boston Bruins. They did that. They came into this one still on that high and still playing very well. And all they really had to do was sit back, make sure they didn't give up too many chances, and then pounce on the opportunities that the Leafs gave them with turnovers and defensive breakdowns. And you have to give them credit for that. Some teams just don't take advantage of these chances as we saw the Leafs do by not scoring on their power plays when they had good zone time. They were able to get set up. They just couldn't get the puck past Bobrovsky. So again, it is only game one and I feel like I have to keep saying that more so because I have to remind myself of that because I was finding myself very frustrated watching the Leafs in this game because it just seemed like at any moment they would be able to turn it on and really just dominate a shift and get a goal or two and they just weren't doing that. That was made very difficult by the good forecheck and the neutral zone pressure by the Panthers, so I'm not saying it was all the Leafs' fault, but they really needed to find ways to adjust and they didn't do that in-game, so all we can do is hope that they do that in between this one and game number two. But that's going to do it for me in this video. How did you feel about game number one? Let me know down in the comments. But if you would like to hear more from me or from Center Ice, you can head on over to fromcenterice.com there's links to all the places you could find us over there or if you look in the description 
of this video, you will find the links to all of our social media pages. You can follow along on there. All of that being said, thank you all so very much for tuning in. I appreciate each and every one of you. Get some rest, drink some water, and hydrate. Get ready for game number two. It's coming up Thursday, and I will catch y'all in the next video. Bye, guys.